Good afternoon guys, this is Andy from Big Mac Studio and Workshop and today um, I am painting a sister battle vehicle. Now as you can see it's um, from the emulator kit but I'm actually um, using it as a converted exorcist. So I've started off with a layer of the fang because I wanted a sort of a space wolfy grey colour. I found something on the internet um, for a bit of reference artwork and it looked really interesting. So um, I went with the sort of space wolf palette. Um, highlighting it up with the uh, with the fang um, and um, moving on towards uh, Russ grey um, which is obviously more of a blue than a grey uh, as you're probably aware by now uh, but it's, it does make an interesting colour scheme for Sisters of Battle because it's very non-traditional uh, they tend to be um, classic sort of uh, blacks and dark sort of purples uh, but I wanted something a little bit different for these, um, so I chose something a bit more interesting. So I'm now I'm just doing a bit of pre-shading here um, before I continue on um, with a mix of the rust grey and a bit of black. It's just to um, add a bit of shading in, a bit of depth for when the extra colours. Apologies for my left hand there, um, not the not the best image, but uh, we are getting better, which is good. Um, bit of a shout out to you all whilst I'm um, painting uh, this. Is, uh, thank you this, uh, for the 500 subscribers now. We are doing awesomely. You're, all, all you guys are great. So next step is Rust Grey, uh, which is for the um, primary highlight. Um, I was initially uh, going to go with this, but I kept on going higher and higher. It was actually more of a, a gr off-white grey colour uh, when I finished off. Um, when I finish off the paintwork. So now this is a good old Fenris grey, um, which will be normally the top highlight for Space Wolves. Uh, but I take, I take this a few more layers up, just to make it look a bit different. I didn't want to look too Space Wolfy. Uh, although I do like the colour scheme, I just wanted something um, what stood out as not Space Wolves. So I'm just adding a few more layers of the um, of Fenris grey. And then I'm using Vallejo's Pale Blue Grey, uh, which is an absolutely beautiful colour over the top of the Space Wolf colours. Um, as you can see, it just adds that little bit of um, stark white to the Blue Grey colours, uh, making it look a lot brighter, a lot more clean uh, than, a uh, than a standard Space Wolf colour scheme. I'm uh, making sure I'm doing, as Duncan from GW would say, uh, multiple thin coats. Um, it just stops the paint from um, bubbling up and getting too thick in areas. It's very easy to do, even with an airbrush. So just make sure you're putting the coats on nice and thin. Um, I use uh, through the airbrush. I use a consistency of mil uh, about milk sort of colour, um, and it even I use the same when I'm uh, running it through uh, off a brush as well. Now, anything we do here, as always, can be done with a paintbrush. Um, I'm now using. Um, an off-white uh, by Vallejo uh, for the edge highlights on the entirety of the vehicle. Um, just rubbing off any um, lines that are just a bit too thick. Uh, just make sure that the um, water, that the paint is very thin. It gives you a bit more flexibility and a bit more breathing room when you're painting. Here I am again, just uh, adding some more edge highlights to the vehicle from um, a different angle. I'm just going around all the different shapes of the, of the um, vehicle, just trying to use the upper edges as best as possible. Um, just it adds that extra uh, touch to the uh, paintwork. It makes it look just that bit nicer when you've got a decent edge highlight on, um, on the entirety. Okay, now so I'm painting all the um, the, the, the fleur de lis. Uh, I'm starting off with brassy brass, which again is another Vallejo paint. Uh, you could easily substitute it with hash or copper or um, any of the uh, GW sort of brass or gold, uh, copper ranges. Uh, I just happen to use this one because it's what I have uh, to hand, and I, I genuinely um, really like it as a colour. It gives a really good coverage. 
So I've um, gone around all the uh, extra details of the uh, vehicle, including the chimney stacks and um, the little plates what I've um, put on for decorative purposes. The windows, I've gone for um, game, sort of Vallejo's German Uniform Green. Now, um, I wanted to uh, have the windows not too shiny. Um, I wanted them to look like a part of the vehicle, but not really stand out. So I went to a sort of more passable colour uh, to, to uh, get that effect. The lettering around the fleur de lis uh, was just gently brushed over. With, uh, really, it was almost a dry brush. Um, with just a block um, and a, just a couple of very very gentle layers of almost dry brush black over the year top. So now I've got to uh, start off on a red. The red is burnt red uh, by again Vallejo um, and I find I'm, I'm taken to this one for uh, half a minute. I've uh, been using it a lot recently. Um, it's got a sort of a, a sort of a brown, sort of murky uh, colour to it. Um, it makes it look quite interesting when it's highlighted up. The lights, I've gone for a blue. Now the reason behind this is um, blue light and green light and red light don't travel as far as a white or yellow. So I figured it's a military vehicle, so it would not actually use a white light sort of um, searchlight system. It'd be more of a um, a muted cord so it doesn't travel as far so you can't see them much in the dark. Uh, obviously now we get on, onto the Agrax for the washers. Uh, the Agrax goes all over the um, metal work. Um, get plenty on there because it's just awesome. And uh, a couple of thin layers, a couple of layers on that and it really picks out the detail of the metal work. The skulls on the um, little banner thing are painted up in Carrack Stone. Obviously uh, I wash them down with Agrax as well um, because it's just the best colour to wash um, bone sort of colours with in my opinion. Strong Tone is a, uh, is a uh, good option to um, replace as well. So the highlights on the um, brass work was first highlight was done in dwarf copper. Um, I kept the bands uh, rather large, um, especially on the uh, upper fleur de lis. And then over the top was Vallejo's Airs Gold, and I used uh, an air colour because it was um, because it's really really thin. That allowed me a lot of um, extra control. Uh, once I'd um, put a very thin layer of uh, the gold. I then uh, tarnished the metalwork up with a very very light dry brush of silver. Uh, I'm not a fan of dry brushing but um, I did use it for this just to uh, add that extra um, tarnished look uh, to make sure that the uh, uh, metalwork looks like it's been in place for a while. As you can see, I'm not using a dry brush brush, I'm just using a very much uh, an old battered brush from a long time ago because I wanted the bristles to be really, really gentle on the um, dry brushing. And then back to the Agrax just to take the, uh, the starkness of the highlights away from anywhere where we, we shouldn't be. I um, try to keep it into the inner reaches of the uh, join, of the joins on the um, figure, um, just to add definition to the um, shape. So highlighting on the red was done with a 50-50 mix of gory red and burnt red for the first um, highlights. I could have done this with uh, the airbrush, but I felt like I just wanted to do it with a brush 
Um, it would have been a lot of faffing about trying to get the um, masking tape and everything in the right position, so it was just easier to do it with a brush in this case. Once uh, the upper, the, the thicker highlights was done, I then went straight to Gory Red um, from the 50-50 uh, mix. Again, this paint was really thin, it just helped me um, control the paint up a bit, a bit better, um, allowing um, the transitions to look a lot more smooth. The edges uh, were straight to bloody red. Now, I guess, again, this is a, a Vallejo colour, but it's also very orangey. I wouldn't normally take this sort of jump, but um, it just seemed to really work on the uh, vehicle. I can, I, as, I, as you know, I, I kept the paint very, very thin to allow me extra control, but it really worked. Um, the, 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 fat, the higher jump uh, for the edge highlights um, really helped add a bit of depth to the colours. The windows again uh, were just highlighted with a mix of the uh, German uniform and an off-white. Um, just keeping the reflection to the same areas on the, the windows. So the, the lighting was all coming from the same spot. And once I've got a bit, once I was happy with the first highlight, I just then went and did some very gentle edge highlighting with um, a very a very light combination of the same two colours, off white and more sorry more white to uh, the green, uh, just to add a second highlight and just just to bring the um, finishing touches on that particular section um, together. As you can see, it's not a very difficult paint job to do this, uh, but it did look really, it does look really interesting on the um, on the table, and uh, a full army of these would look quite cool. So I'm just uh, doing the sensor, the communications array in silver, uh, just to break it up a little bit. I didn't want to uh, add too many um, dull colours to the areas. So now I'm highlighting the. Skulls, as I said before, with the uh, little shatty bone, just to finish them off. I didn't go too high on, on the, uh, didn't go too heavy on the highlights on that, as I was going to come back and do some uh, griming up. Tanks shouldn't be clean, especially ones in theatre. Even sister battle vehicles they, uh, don't have time to get cleaned. So I started off with um, dark mud uh, by Vallejo Air. Just kept keeping it towards the bottom regions of the um, of the vehicle, uh, where the mud would build up. Now sometimes I start off with a dark colours first. This time I started off with a lighter. Uh, I also went around the chimney stacks um, to make make the, make the sort of sutted look what you'd expect around uh, an exhaust port. Once uh, the um, dark mud had uh, gone down. I then went over with burnt umber, um, adding a thinner band to the um, paint to the colours. So the drier, lighter colour is at the top. I then mixed up some rhinox hide um, to add a real dark, um, mudded colour to the lower, lowest regions and also around um, the exhaust ports and chimney stacks. Uh, it's really added a lot to it, uh, really helped make the uh, vehicle look a lot more interesting. The final uh, colour from the, with the airbrush was done in just straight black uh, at the tops of the chimney stacks and also right along the bottom edge of the vehicle just to really add some depth to it and um, because uh, of the other layers, it didn't come out as straight black, it just looked really, really dark. Now, I put a varnish over the top, and now, as you can see, I'm doing some streaking grime. You have to put the varnish on because uh, when you come to the clean up step, you need to uh, use turps to uh, clean it off. So, make sure you, if you're going to use streaking grime, make sure you varnish it 
Um, you, I use the gloss, um, and I'm just putting streaks where the, uh, where the water would run off, so so it would look right. And you just keep on adding as much of this as you want, um, thin layers, pick it up, put the um, paint on, clean it off. Uh, I'm using a uh, odorless turbs, um, which is an Abdalung one, and I'm just brushing it off with a hard bristle brush. I use a hard bristle brush because it really makes the, um, the streak and grime scratch. So you get some really interesting uh, shades because it all comes off in uh, unevenly. Which is what you want, really, because uh, once it's once, once um, you've got the straight and grime, it comes off in different sort of areas, so it becomes faded and darker in certain areas, making it look more real. So I've had a couple of layers of that, and then I varnished it in uh, a mat. I didn't bother doing an oil wash on this for um, as. The oil wash would have been a bit too much on on the um, on the vehicle, uh, so I'm just polishing off some of the excess, and uh, you just keep on going back and forth until you've got the vehicle as dirty as you want it. It's dead easy, but it looks great. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope it gave you some kind of insight into uh, how certain techniques work, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got anything you want to say to us, please feel free to uh, drop us a message. Uh, we're more than happy to answer any questions. And if you have uh, like liking what you see and you want to see some more, please hit that subscribe button. We will massively appreciate it. It all adds up. So thank you for uh, watching. This is Andy, and see you soon. Bye-bye.